What up folks, it's Alex here, I hope you're all well. In this slightly longer than usual video, I'm gonna give you a quick introduction to expressions and how you can use them to create sort of dynamic counters within projects in the edit page. And by doing that, I'm gonna show you how to create all of these different counters going on here. So zero to whatever counter, the same but backwards, as well as some percentage progress counters as well. Now, if you just wanna learn how to do them, but you don't really care about how they work per se, then just watch the first couple of minutes and then there's a cheat sheet down in the description below. You can just copy the expressions, dump into your project, and then off you go. But if you do wanna see how they work, which I recommend that you do, then stick around because there's loads of really useful stuff in this video, hopefully. Anyway, I hope that you enjoy it. Let's boot up into DaVinci Resolve and have a look, shall we? So here we are in DaVinci Resolve, we're on the Edit tab. First thing we're gonna do, open up the Effects Library, Toolbox, Titles, and then you want the Text Plus. Not the regular text, Text Plus with the little lightning bolt next to it. We're gonna drag that, add it onto our timeline. Give it a click, head up into the top right hand corner and open up the Inspector. Now here, you've got this styled text. This is usually where you type whatever you wanted to appear in this text box. But we're gonna do something a little bit different. If you right click anywhere within that box, and select Expression, and this box will appear underneath. Now, as you can see at the minute, it just says text, and then it's got the quotation marks with the text that we've entered. So you can enter text in here and it'll just appear like anything else, and you just do that. You don't even need the word text, you just need the quotation marks. So if I just put quotation, hello, and another quotation mark there, enter, it will say hello. Now that's not that useful because obviously you could just type it in the style box. What makes this unique is that you can do loads of cool expressions or formulas in here. So to give you an example, if I put 10 plus 10, it's not going to give me 10 plus 10, it's going to give me 20. Because you can do basic maths within this box. So it will do the maths for me, rather than giving me 10 plus 10, it will actually give you the answer of 20. Which can be handy if you can't bother to get a calculator, you can come and just do some quick maths in there and it will appear on the screen. So that's cool, we've got 20, but let's say we want to combine that quick maths with some text. We can do that as well. So if you just do a space, dot, dot, and then a space, like so, that's basically an and or an ampersand. That has allows you to combine more than one thing. So we can combine that calculation of 10 plus 10 with, let's say it was bananas. So I've just done a quotation mark, bananas, quotation marks again, hit enter, it now says 20 bananas. So we can just combine the two to get it to display whatever we want. Now, that's sort of useful, but not that useful really, because you could have just typed that in the text box. This starts to get really cool when you use some of the built-in expressions or the, the built-in tools that are in Resolve. So let's just delete all of that. So the first one, just type the word time, all in lowercase, and then hit enter. So I've got 85 at the minute, but if I scroll across my timeline, you can see that's changing. Now my project is 24 frames per second, so if I go to the one second mark, you can see it's 24. Because what this is doing is counting the current frame. So it will just count every single frame all the way up. And that's dynamic, so we can move it wherever we want, shorten it, and it will always go from naught to whatever frame is at the end. Sort of useful, but not that useful really, because you're probably not gonna be counting frames all that often. You probably want that as seconds. Now I know, obviously, this is a 24 frames per second timeline, so if we simply do time divided by the number of frames that the project is, which in my case is 24 or 30 or 60 or whatever, we've now got naught, it's hard to see, let me make this a bit smaller, four, five, six, seven, eight, so on. It's counting up in seconds. But obviously we've got far too many decimal points here, it's a little bit messy, so we need to tidy that up. Now this, again, nice and easy to remember, you've got to round up. If you just think, look up, you see the ceiling, to round down, look down, you'll see the floor. So round up is C-E-I-L for ceiling, round down is floor. So I'm gonna round this up, so I'm just gonna type in C-E-I-L. Now the ceiling and the floor works with brackets, so we put C-E-I-L, open bracket, go right to the end, close the bracket, hit enter, and there we go. So this goes from zero all the way to 10. 
Now you can see what it does is it goes from zero and then the very first frame it goes to one. That's because we're rounding up. If you wanted it to stay longer on zero for a full second, we'd use floor instead. So now it's zero, one, two, three, etc. If you wanted that to start at a particular point, so if you wanted, let's say, a timer to begin at 30 and go upwards, we can just do 30 plus enter. And now it starts at 30. Obviously, if you wanted to go the other way, we could do 30 minus. And now we've got a 30 second timer that's coming down from 30. But while that works, it's a bit of a pain because you need to know the starting point. And if I went too long, if I made this over 30 seconds, we start to go into negative numbers, which is not what we want. So we can actually make a countdown that is completely dynamic. Now to do that, what we need to do is find out the last frame. So we need to already know the last frame or the highest frame within this counter, and then we can count back from there. Fortunately, that's easy to do. So I'm just going to clear everything, and we're going to start again. So we're going to type comp, all in lowercase, dot render with a capital R, end with a capital E. And that's going to show us 239. So there's 239 frames in this text box. The comp refers to the composition, which is our text box here. If we make that longer, that will adjust to say 555 or whatever. Sometimes you may notice this, it's still displaying the old figure. What you need to do is break this. So put a full stop in there, for example, hit enter, get rid of the full stop, enter again, and it'll just fix it. It's because it's already pre-rendered it and it's getting a little bit confused. So now we already know how many frames are in this text box. So now we've got our starting point. So if we were to do comp dot render end minus time, we've got five, 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 and it'll count all the way down to zero. Perfect. But again, not ideal because it's in frames. We want it in seconds. So let's put brackets around this. So that's the thing it does first. It will do comp render end minus time. And then if we divide that by 24, which is our number of frames, we get a seconds countdown. Nearly there, it's working, it counts down in seconds to zero, but two new decimal points again. So then we can use our floor and ceiling again, whichever one you want. So I'm gonna use floor this time, so I'm gonna put floor, open a bracket, we'll go right to the end, close that bracket, hit enter, and now we've got a countdown from 23 all the way down to zero. And again, completely dynamic, move it around, put it wherever you want, it will always change to be, to count down the length of the current text box. So really, really useful. Now, of course, you can put this into a power bin. So then you've already got this counter, this countdown, it's dynamic, you can drag it out of your power bin, put it on any project, it'll know where to start from and do an automatic countdown for you. Let's get rid of that. Let's just expand on this one further point. So we know the total number of frames in the composition and we have a simple frame counter. We can use that to give us a percentage. So if I simply do time, which is the current frame, divided by comp.render, can't spell, render end with a capital R, capital E, and we get this. So we get zero all the way up to one because obviously let's say that this is 100 frames, 100 divided by 100 is one, whereas 100 divided by zero is of course zero. So we get everything in between. Now again, it's almost there, but not quite right, because it's naught point. We want this to be a percentage. So if we pop all this in brackets, multiply it all by 100. So instead of a zero point something all the way up to one, we get obviously zero to 100. And now we've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 100. But again, we've got too many decimal points. It looks a bit messy. So we can do the same as before, ceiling or floor, depending whether we, we want that round up or round zero, whether you want that zero to hang on for a little bit or to start at one. Let's do the ceiling. We'll open a bracket, go right to the end, close that bracket, hit enter, and now there we go. So we've got zero all the way up to 100. 
And again, doesn't matter where you put it, doesn't matter how long it is, it'll always just go from zero to 100. We've got this really nice progress or percentage counter for us. Obviously it's missing the percentage sign at the minute. So we're just gonna go right to the end. We're gonna do a space, dot, dot, space, quotation marks, the percentage sign, quotation marks again, and hit enter. And now we've got the number with the percentage sign at the end. Cool. Now let's say we wanted the word progress at the beginning. Same thing, do the quotation, we'll do progress and a colon and a space. We'll close that off with another quotation mark so it'll say the word progress. Space, dot, dot, space, enter. And there we go. Progress from zero to 100. But let's say we want this the other way around. So we want, rather than a zero to 100 percentage, we want a 100 to zero. So let's start at the beginning because we're always going to want this one thing. We're going to want our time divided by comp dot render end. So we've got this zero to one, but we want that to go backwards. So the easiest way to do that, one minus. So we start off at one and we work backwards. So we start off at one, we subtract that, which gives us a zero at the end. So it's exactly the same, but backwards. So again, we want that to be a percentage, so we times that by 100, so let's wrap that in brackets, times 100. We start off at 100, we end on zero. Cool, two new decimal points, so let's do seal, bracket, right to the end, bracket, enter, cool. We've got rid of our decimal points, it's 100 all the way down to zero. Now, we want the word progress again, so we're going to do quotation, progress, colon, space, quotation again, space, dot, dot, space, enter. Cool, we've got the word progress with our countdown. The last thing we're missing is our little percentage sign at the end, so we're going to come to the end, same again, space, dot, dot, space, quotation, percentage sign, quotation, enter, job done. We've got a progress, counting down from 100 to zero, we can move it around, make it as long as we like, and all it will do, do the exact same thing, it will just slow down that progress meter, so it will always start at 100 and always end on zero. Now obviously this is a text box, so you can do the size, you can mess with the colour, you can move it around, do whatever you like to it. And that's it folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave me a like, leave me a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or feedback, pop them down below. Do let me know if you enjoyed this slightly longer format midweek video, maybe I can do some more of these in the future as well. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, stay safe, and then until next time, cheerio. Boop.